Now we are going to use the relationships between the load, the shear force and the bending moment to solve a variety of problems. Now, similar to what we had done for the method of sections, we will again you know, travel from very simple examples to more complicated ones. Uh, and you will see that the real merit of you know using these relationships maybe it won't be as apparent as you have when you are looking at the you know the simple problems but as you go more and more complicated ones you will see that uh, this method is is highly efficient compared to the method of sections remember for the method of sections as we you know saw that if you have a beam which with a variety of different loads for example if you have point loads you have you know the distributed load you have a concentrated load you have uh, you know triangular load you have a concentrated moment the number of sections it you know keeps on you know increasing and increasing and consequently the number of equations that you have to solve also proportionately goes up now in those problems you will see the real merit of using this relationship but as it is as as how we do things let's take a few of the smaller baby steps first using us using some simple examples and then we'll delve on to the more complicated one so let's go ahead and look at the first example so the first example which we have is is this one over here now you might remember this problem we had done this previously for using the method of sections and if i just have to go back and show you that we had used the method of sections where we took a you know at a certain distance we took a section x and we derived the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram shear force diagram was linear bending moment diagram was quadratic over here the bending moment was maximum where the shear force was zero and that was at a distance of l over two right so we have solved this problem using the method of sections now let's go ahead and see that using the relationships how we are going to solve this problem so we are going to use the relationships between the load shear and the moment now before we go ahead and start using this relationship let's maybe quickly write down again uh, these relationships which we have uh, so the first relationship if you remember the first one was your uh, dv dx was equals to minus of w of x w of x is the function of the load that you have right and from here we also had another relationship that is vd minus vc was uh, minus of integral from xc to xt which was the distance remember these relationships are all derived from by taking the distance from the left to right so while in the method of sections you were according to your convenience you're taking a you know section on the left or section on the right or you know, portion of the beam on the left on the right here this relationship which we, which we derived were always going from left to right the point d was always to the right of the point c you can use the relationship by going from right to left but from the and for, for, for those if you if you are if you are going that way the relationship the signs and everything might change so i highly recommend when you use these relationships you always go from the left to the right of the beam and you will see that when you use this relationship it really doesn't matter you know whether your structure load is complicated on the left hand side or it has more number of loadings it really doesn't matter it, it gives you a very nice way to solve the problem so anyway so going back over here so we had uh, w x dx and which was again the negative of the from this relationship over here as you can tell this is a negative of the area of loading diagram we had looked at one more relationship that was between the moment and the shear so let's just write that down as well we had looked at our dm dx was equals to v and correspondingly we had md minus mc which was the area of the shear force diagram between c and d so here also area of the loading diagram between c and d right and we looked at two more uh, subset relationships if you may that for a point load we expect a kind of a jump in the shear force diagram and no change in the moment and for a point moment we expect a jump in the bending moment diagram right and no corresponding change in the shear so this is these are the four things which we had looked at now 
Taking these ahead, let's you know try to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram for this particular beam that is there. Right. So first of all, let's uh, maybe just below draw two beams again so that we know that where we are drawing the shear force diagram and the other one, another one maybe over here for the bending moment diagram. Right. Okay, so let's take a look at this beam. So you have a simply supported beam with the reactions Ra and Rb and let's say uh, this load that you have over here, say let's say this load is W uniform distributed load so it's a constant right so let's start with the shear force diagram or maybe even before that let's write what our reactions are going to be so your ra will as you can see it's very simple you can write w l over 2 rb will also be equal it's a symmetric structure w l over 2 over here right okay so now for the shear force diagram so for the shear force diagram again you are going from the left to the right so if when you are going from the left to the right at the very left i don't have any option but to have a vertical line of w l over 2 because that is the shear that you have over here so i am going to go and i'm going to mark a vertical line over here as w l over 2 right now now here kicks in the relationships that how the rest of the diagram is going to go okay so for this problem so let's just you know mark here okay so for this particular problem you see i am trying to draw the shear force diagram so this is my sfd again so let's look at the relationships for the shear so this is the relationship for the shear between the shear and the loading w that you have over here right okay First of all, we are we are hypothesizing that or we have seen that our dv dx is minus of w which is a function of x. Now in this case that the w is you know it's just a constant load so in this case equals to minus you know w over here right. So if so this is a degree, degree 1 right so sorry this is a degree 0 not degree 1 so this is a degree 0 right because it's a constant line so you can tell that once you integrate this once you integrate this one over here that is you find v right so v is going to be what once you integrate this uh, degree 0 it is going to be degree 1 so v is going to be have a linear variation so it is a degree 1 so that means it is going to be a linear variation okay so now we know that for this entire beam the shear force is going to vary in a linear manner so we have established that so it's going to be a linear line right okay now let's look at the second relationship over here that is vd minus vc is negative of the area of the loading diagram so at this left end this so we have two points over here let's just mark this so this is my point a and this is my point b so how can i write vb minus va b is again the point to the right of a similar to d which was to the right of c over here so vb minus va will be negative of the area of the loading diagram between b and a so vb minus b va so b is here a is here so it is negative of the loading diagram between b and a and what is the value what is the value of the area of the loading diagram the loading diagram has an ordinate of w and the length is l over here okay so vb minus va will be equals to minus of w times l right now that we have this over here let's see from there can we get what is the going to be the value of the shear at the point b yes i can because i know the value of the shear at the point a is nothing but w l over 2 over here right so this gives me that my vb minus w l over 2 equals to minus w l which in turn gives me uh, sorry which in turn gives me v b is equals to minus w l over 2 right? so here at a i have established because of this reaction i don't have any option but to have a pointed upward force w l over 2 and i have found out that at the point b it is going to be a minus w l over 2 over here so let's go ahead and mark that particular line as well so at the point b I am going to have a minus W L over 2. Now remember the upper 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 half is positive, the bottom half is negative. So I am not writing a negative sign over here. So I'm just going to write W L over 2. And what did I establish from here? That the variation of V is going to be linear. So from here 
to here it is going to be just a plain and simple linear variation so let's just uh, mark that as well so this is the linear variation that you are going to have So here, as you can see from the figure, this is a positive and this is a negative. Now, as you can tell that here, the, the, from the symmetry itself, you can tell that this crossing at the zero point over here, but the shear is zero, it has to be at L over two, at L over two. But this also you can derive from this relationship. So how can you derive, derive that from this relationship? Let's take a look. So this is my point of zero shear. So let me maybe go ahead and, you know, say this point as uh, C for the sake of discussion so i can write vc minus va right the difference between c and a the shear difference of shear between c and a is going to be the area of the loading diagram between this point between where c is and the left end a now i'm trying to find where this c happens so let me maybe call that distance as xc so let me just point mark that over here so from here to here let's say this is uh, xc this is what i'm trying to find i know intuitively it's l over 2 but let's see if the equations give that or not so vc minus va what is the value of the shear at c it is 0 so this is 0 minus what is the value of the shear at a that is w l over 2 will be equal to the area of the loading diagram between c and a so what is that going to be it is going to be w times xc right because w is a constant so xc may be somewhere over here so w times xc similar to what we wrote here before it is boys w times l over here so this is 0 minus w l over 2 is going to be negative of the area of the loading diagram between 0 and xc so it is going to be minus of w times xc over here so from that you can easily tell that your xc that where the zero, zero shear happens it is going to be come out as l over 2 over here right so this is or this is also we sort of you know even intuitively or if you want to go the hard coded way of you know deriving it you can also derive so we have uh, this point c over here so this is as l over 2 and this is also l over 2 so i am done with my shear force diagram so you see just purely using the relationships i have drawn my shear force diagram okay so now i am done with my shear force let's uh, let's go to the the bending moment diagram so this is my bmd so for that i am going to use the relationships of the moment or let me again draw a dividing line over here so I'm going to look at the relationships of the moment. The relationship of the moment is dm dx equals to v. So let's just, you know, write that down over here. So I have dm dx equals to v, right? And here I have already established that v is the, you know, order of the uh, it's a linear it's it's a, it's a it's a degree one right so that tells me that once you integrate this guy over here your moment is going to be a second degree that it is going to be a quadratic right and also from our knowledge of when you have pins at the two ends and no externally applied moment we know that the moment here is going to be zero that is the moment at the point a is going to be zero moment at the point b is going to be zero and between a to b it has a quadratic variation right so let's try to you know find that how that quadratic variation is going to be so if we have to find that one over here so you see this is one relationship and the other relationship that you have is is this one over here right so it is going to have a quadratic variation and if it is starts from zero over here has a quadratic variation and you know comes to this particular point over here there is a point in between it must have a maximum point right now where does this maximum happen look at this relationship over here and this will bring you back to what you had you know studied before the dm dx equals to v right so the point where your v equals to zero that is the point where your m must be maximum so we can maybe write that over here so where 
v equals to 0 it's a maximum or a minima now we know that here it is you know going to be a maxima over here so v and and i will tell you why it is going to be a maxima there as well right uh, that why, why it is not in the in the bottom half plane so for v equals to 0 so where then m will have a maxima right now how do i know that whether it will be an upward quadratic order you know downward quadratic like right here like here remember dm dx equals to v right so at x equals to 0 what is the value of v it is wl over 2 so it is going to have a slope you know somewhere something like this over here then at x equals to b dm dx equals to the v at b so which is minus wl over 2 so here also the slope will be you know something like this maybe so in between you have the quadratic variation and the maximum of that will be at v equals to 0 so that is at this particular point over here at this at this point c and let's calculate the value of what we get so if this point is c again where my cursor is at the moment i can write mc let me write with the other color i have uh, mc minus m a here m d minus m c is the area of the shear force diagram between c and d so here m c minus m a will be the area of the shear force diagram between a to c so what is that area of the shear force diagram it's going to be half of this one times this altitude over here so it is going to be half times l over 2 times w l over 2 so that is w l square by h so that is the that is the uh, uh the 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 mc why because m a equals to zero right because m a is the moment at here where we have a pin so the moment at a is equals to zero so this is equals to zero over here so we have that m c equals to m max equals to w l square by 8 so let's just go ahead and draw that again so this is you know let me so as i said it sometimes helps to you know draw these uh, guidelines that we have over here okay. so my moment variation is going to be this quadratic where here i am reaching the maximum value so this is the max is w l square over 8 and as you can tell the slope at this particular point over here is going to be 0 over here. so you see if you you know compare uh, let me write that a little bit below maybe just not to interfere with what we wrote above so m max becomes equals to w l square by 8 so if you compare the and the whole and the whole is positive the whole diagram is positive over here is a positive shear negative shear the whole bending moment diagram is positive and if you compare this with what we had before it's the exact same thing wl over 2 wl over 2 positive negative you have a positive shear and you have a maximum value here w l square divided by 8 so i hope the first example using the relationship between the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram was clear let's move on to the next example